What's up, y'all, and welcome back to Found Bites, a game review series. My name is Brian, and I'll be your host. If you don't know about us, we're all about testing out and finding small, high-quality video games. This is a podcast that aims to respect your time and money as a gamer and a consumer by sifting through storefronts and sales to find the gems that may be worth your precious resources. If you're interested in reaching out or helping out, feel free to email us at foundbytesgrs at gmail.com, tweet at foundbytesgrs, and also rate and subscribe to us on whatever podcast feed you're using. If you're a developer who would like to participate in our Spotlight interview series of special episodes, please reach out through any of our channels. We would love to hear from you. And we're now on YouTube. So if you are someone you know, prefers to listen to shows on YouTube, please recommend them Found Bites GRS on YouTube. All of our episodes will be available as thumbnail videos with audio synth animations, but we'll also be putting up the videos of the interviews we've done so far, as well as some other exclusive content. So check it out. But enough about the show. Let's get into our next game. A Space for the Unbound is the game for this week's episode. A Space for the Unbound is a 2D adventure game, and I see a lot of similarities with Saturday Morning RPG, which we've covered before, Life is Strange, and even a game like Shenmue, which is a bit obscure, but a lot of gameplay similarities there. The game was originally released in January of 2023 on PC, Switch, PS4 and 5, Xbox One, Series X and S. The game was developed by Mojiken Studio. I might be butchering that. M-O-J-I-K-E-N Studio. They're a small team from Indonesia, and they've released a couple small games, none that I've really ever heard of, but uh, She and the Lightbearers, Raven Monologue, When the Past Was Around, and some of these were browser games, some of these were available on consoles or just PC and Switch. There's an interesting shared universe, I feel, visually, With this, especially as you progress through A Space for the Unbound, I was looking at some of the images for their older games, and it was interesting to see some parallels or maybe some things that popped up from one of their past games. The game was published by Toj Productions, or Toje, T-O-G-E, and they're an Indonesian-based publisher. They publish a lot of indie games, and of note, they've published Coffee Talk, which we talked about on our Tales and Sales episode. The game had physical releases, or is about to, coming to you from Serenity Forge, They're doing a standard and a collector's edition for PS5 and Switch. And the pre-orders are actually live right now. As of publishing this podcast, they're supposed to start to go out Q1 of 2024, so coming up pretty soon. And the standard and collector's edition, they both have goodies packed in. Even the standard one, which is the box, I think has uh, maybe some art stuff or some cards or something like that in there. And these are available to pre-order at all major retailers. I saw this on like Target or Amazon, Best Buy, so you can jump on there and pre-order these physical editions. The game was released at an MSRP of $19.99, and I just saw that there is a prologue chapter. We're going to talk about uh, how the game is split into chapters, but there is a prologue chapter, and that's actually uh, free to try, uh, I think, on all platforms. But $19.99 for the digital edition for those Serenity Forge uh, physical editions, the standard $44.99, and the collector's $99.99. Runtime of the game, if you're going straight through, not trying to get any of the extra things on the side, could take you probably like 10 hours, but getting all the extra stuff may be more than 12. For our PlayStation listeners, this does have a platinum trophy, and some of these trophies have a lot of missable collectibles. And I just found out that I missed two things, and I'm angry because I have literally every other trophy so far, uh, but I'm not going to be able to get that one. And we'll talk about uh, possibilities. I don't see a chapter select in what I'm playing so far. Uh, But I would love to see that if they're going to plan on updating the game. So me, I got this on 
PlayStation 5, and I got it on sale for $14.99. And there are six chapters in the game. I just beat the fourth chapter, and so I'm at somewhere between seven and eight hours. I'm trying to be thorough. Again, I already know that I missed something. In terms of recommendation, I found this game out from Shuhei Yoshida on Twitter. He is uh, really high up at Sony. He is in charge of their indie game initiative, and he was talking about this game. He's always championing indie games and really finding some gems. So he said, you know, before this game even dropped, like, this is going to be a big game. Like, this is really good. You got to play it. So I definitely listen to him and I follow him on Twitter and he follows me. It's not that big of a deal. But shout out to Shuhei Yoshida for recommending A Space for the Unbound. Let's talk gameplay for A Space for the Unbound. So this is a 2D game, and it's a side-scrolling adventure game, so you're kind of going back and forth on the screen. Like I said, it is in six chapters, and we'll talk about progression in a little bit. But just some of the basics. So it's 2D. You can move left. You can move right. You can walk, or you can hold a button to run. And when you get to the edge of the screen, an icon may or may not pop up that says, like, you can go to the next screen. It's like an open doorway and an arrow going in the direction that you're going. And so if you just keep going, you'll go off onto the next screen. And sometimes you'll see this travel icon in a doorway. So if you're not on the edge of the screen, you're somewhere in the middle where there's a doorway and that icon pops up and it'll give a direction for either up or down. That means that you can go into the room or into the building or something like that. When you approach things... A question mark will pop up for you to interact with them. And this can range from picking up an item off the ground, picking up a collectible, something like that, examining an object, talking to a person. And typically, if it's something more advanced than just picking something up, uh, what's going to pop up is sort of like an action wheel. And what responses or things to use that are available vary depending on what you're addressing. So, for example, like you might see it pop up when you're looking at an object or something like that. And one of the options might be to examine it if it happens to be a person you might also get the option to talk um, it might be an interact like you touch it or, or do something with it and then also any items that you have in your inventory are going to also show up on that wheel so you can just like present that item to that thing or that person and of course if it's not relevant it'll say like nothing happened and then you'll just go back to the wheel this is going to be uh, the action wheel is something you're going to see a lot when you're interacting with things when you're talking to people something to take note of I've noticed and I'm a from software veteran so you can exhaust dialogue with certain characters so like you might talk to them and they might be done but then if you talk to them again they might have something else to say as you start to talk to unique characters or characters that are involved in sort of progressing the story you may have dialogue choices where you can just kind of scroll through and it's like this response this response and then some advanced things you're going to get something very early on which is called space dive and it's basically an option in the wheel that only presents itself when an icon pops up over a character. Um, and that's very uh, story oriented, so I don't want to spoil too much with that. You can pause the game and you can pause it by pressing options on the PlayStation controller and you can, you know, save and load and things like that. Or you can pull up the menu that's like your character menu and it's inside of this book. So like he pulls out this book um, and there are certain pages where you can see certain things. So in the book, you can see certain collectibles that you've gotten so far, items that are in your inventory. You can look at your quests and the different objectives. There's also a dialogue log, which is really nice. So if you haven't pl picked up the game in a while and you forget you know, the last conversation or a conversation from way back. Progressing through this game, like I said, it is story chapters. And you'll know when you get to the end of the chapter, it'll come up with a blank screen. It'll say end of chapter, and then it'll have like a title for it. But when you're within this chapter, you pretty much have free roam of this town. 
You can go side to side, like I said, to the edge of a screen and then progress more if the icon shows up. As you're roaming through the town, depending on when in the chapter you are or in what chapter you're in, there might be some like timed blockages like, oh, there's a car parked here, so you can't go this path right now, which may indicate that you actually have to do something to move the car, so on and so forth. Your main objectives pretty much always going to be tied to an NPC that's kind of with you at the time, or maybe you have to go find that NPC. It's always accessible to you, like what is next or where you need to go, because you're either following someone or you're talking to them whenever you're kind of lost because they're following you and they're just like tagging along. And your main objectives are pretty much going to involve exploring, traversing through the town, gathering certain items, or solving a certain problem. Like I said, if there's a specific blockage that's like immediately in your way like okay we have to figure out a way to move this a lot of what you're doing could be seen as like gophering like you might have to go back and forth with items uh, at least in the early chapters it might seem that way but as things progress further into the game you're going to be doing a lot more puzzling uh, maybe even some sleuthing and you'll be reading dialogue from different characters and certain words might be highlighted just to kind of give you a sense that this is important but overall progressing through whatever the main objective or quest is I never really found it that cumbersome or difficult uh, and that's really nice because it lets you uh, really enjoy the story and the characters but as you get further in there are some advanced things like you'll possibly be doing some trivia there might be some mini games with like action commands like you are eventually going to be able to fight certain characters certain missions or certain areas where you have to like stealth and you'll see an icon of an eye pop up um so it's really great and entertaining how varied some of the things you're going to do it really doesn't get stale like you're always doing something different. It's introducing something new, but it's not like, oh, you need to learn this whole new mechanic. It's just like something pretty intuitive, like a stealth mission or like answering questions and trivia that I think is really good. And even as I've beaten the fourth chapter, things coming together, maybe combinations of some of these things. Uh, and I think with two more chapters to go, I think there's even going to be some different stuff. So it's really nice to see that variation there. And there's a lot of optional things that you can do. And this is the advantage of having sort of this free roam. And even if there are timed blockages of certain areas, like you really should take advantage of, even if like the story mission is not taking you down a certain way, take advantage of just like exploring the whole town, whether it's just finding people to talk to, or even you might find an object or something that you can't use right now, but there's something in the dialogue he might say to himself, like, hmm, this might be useful for someone who needs X. And you might find that like that's something that, if you keep it in the back of your mind, may come up in a later chapter. So there's always uh, exposition, there's always information, context, coloring in of the bubbles that is really worth it, I feel, in free roaming throughout. But some of the optional things that you can do is collecting. All of these things are missable. The major things that you're going to see early on that you're aiming to collect are bottle caps, there are letters, animals to find, um, and again, all these things are missable. I feel for the most part, none of them are really hidden because if you walk by anything, a question mark will always pop up if there's something that you can interact with. So it is really hard to miss a lot of these collectibles, but I missed two animals in like chapter three or something like that. And I'm really irked about it because I am very thorough and I felt so far that I really didn't need to be. And I found absolutely everything else. Uh, except those two damn animals. There are some side quests, I guess you could call them, with unnamed characters that have like a very quick story arc that you don't need to do. Like it's not like your quest is listed in any objective for that character, but it's something that if you talk to somebody, you find out that if you just talk to them, like you can do something with them very quickly. And it's going to get you like a story collectible, which I'm not going to mention what those are. But I think this, whether it's the collecting of the bottle caps and letters or animals or these, you know, unnamed character side quests, they are very important to world building, I feel. And I'm not saying that you have to do them, but it is really fulfilling to do them and get more context from the world. Uh, and it really just makes this scenario and everything that's happening uh, so much more fascinating uh, and really ties things in emotionally to you. In terms of accessibility, with some of the puzzles, there is a way to kind of fail them, but you can quickly retry. Uh, this happened a couple times for me. One puzzle in particular, you had to like link things together, an item and something that someone said, and I messed it up like 20 times. But it, instantly, it, you're just allowed to retry it after you quote-unquote game over from it. So nothing really 
too bad there. I would really, really like a chapter select mode. I know that it might spoil some things or it might mess with some mechanics potentially, but I love the way that Nier Automata did it because I really wanted to get that platinum trophy and not that there are really that many things that you can quote unquote miss because that's more like for optional endings or different endings. Here there are things that you can just straight up miss and so I really want to get this platinum trophy because I really do enjoy this game but I don't want to have to replay the whole thing just to collect all of these things in one playthrough so hoping maybe in a future update that might come out. But in general I will say I was rarely lost in this story story not necessarily that I wasn't lost in like overall what was going on because I still kind of am but things are getting colored in but just like immediately what I needed to do it was very obvious to me and I feel the same way about the gameplay I can think of maybe one time in this past chapter chapter four where I was kind of walking back and forth like I am looking for something that I need to do and just not finding it and maybe took me like five minutes but eventually I did find it but that was the first time that 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 had happened in the entire game so overall I'll say simple gameplay not a major challenge some of the mini game stuff might be kind of fun challenging but this is not a game that is really gonna you know have you banging your head against the wall or anything like that and in terms of saving it auto saves very frequently Uh, I think anytime you go onto a new screen um, and you can manual save and I think you have like maybe up to 10 slots Um, so if you want to prevent you know missing certain trophies you can actually save in each chapter if you would like because at the end of each chapter there is like a point of no return uh, and they do communicate that to you fairly obviously Let's talk about the vibe of A Space for the Unbound. So like I said, I just finished the fourth chapter. I still have two to go. I don't want to spoil anything for anyone who is going to play this game because I was completely thrown. I didn't expect it to be this complex, this deep, and have this many really, really powerful themes and characters. So I want to go through things very lightly, but let's start with talking about the themes and the setting. So the setting is fairly simple. At least it starts out fairly simple. Kids in school, and I believe they're actually in like a small town in Indonesia. And it starts out with just kind of whimsy, like kids being kids. You know, things are maybe there's some, you know, small instances of dark things, whether it's like teasing or bullying or or whatnot, but just things that kids might get into. And it's interesting. You're in this small town and there are a lot of local shops and townspeople. Everyone kind of knows everyone. Everyone gets called uncle, like all the shop owners are called uncle or grandpa. It really tells you and communicates to you that like this is a small town. Everyone is aware of everyone. Everyone's kind of in this tight-knit community, which is actually important because the idea of knowing someone, I I believe, is is pretty vital. But the game, like I said, it does progress in chapters. It's very Saturday morning RPG in that way. Again, some importance here because there are storylines with particular characters that are going to progress and you remembering certain things is going to be important and something that I think the developers and intended but also your character remembering certain things so there's kind of like a I don't want to say breaking of the fourth wall but between you and your character like you remembering things and sometimes like your character almost remembers it like a line after you think about it and it's like wow you're kind of you know really simpatico there this kind of simple whimsy really it stays about and it quickly evolves into being magical and I'm I mean that quite literally because there is magic in this game whatever that might mean to you but there is some magical things happening and it becomes pretty deep and pretty complex and I'll list some things like dreams being a a thing dreams versus reality memories being a thing and like 
how do we process memories? How are memories created? Maybe not sort of the neurological way, but just sort of the thematic way and what are memories and, and who makes them. Time is a big thing. Some kind of time paradoxes and just time progressing, not maybe knowing when you are. I feel in general some of the gameplay that you get, some of the access to certain things you can do are really linked in with the story and intertwined. And sometimes you might not have access to certain abilities or certain things like that. And that can be something that you really feel as you're playing, like, oh, I can't do this because this thing happened. A lot of pulls from other things like Persona, Inception. I know we talked about dreams and reality. Uh, the Matrix, just in general. Pulling from Alan Wake as well. And I don't want to talk about the individual things that sort of spark those, but... I really feel a nice kind of due diligence amalgamation of those things, um, whether it's directly influenced or just kind of ancillary. It's really refreshing to see all these things kind of crossing, um, maybe not at the exact same time in this game, but these are all things that I really do love and enjoy. Like I love the Persona games and some of the things you do in those games, and I love Alan Wake and you know, Inception and the Matrix, like just very unique things, I feel, all of them. And to see them kind of maybe come together or maybe have influence here uh, is really kind of cool. Animals, animals and monsters are a thing. I can't quite say whether they're, you know, meant to be metaphors or alluding to something specific, but I do see those commonalities maybe as like a polarity between the two of them, animals and monsters. This game has a lot of twists and turns. The one thing I will say is that, especially in regards to the story, this game is never dull. I found that I had a lot of questions and I was making a lot of connections. Again, I just beat the fourth chapter and I'm learning things, but I'm still not quite sure how everything lines up or what things are exactly. I have a lot more information now at the end of chapter four, but there are still some questions that I had from chapter one that I don't have quite answered. I like that mystery. I like that it's still keeping that what is actually happening alive, that question. And there's a lot of jaw-dropping moments. I literally hit my jaw dropped uh, maybe like five or six times. Maybe it's because of some of the dark themes, uh, some of the character twists, things I did not see coming. There's a lot of unhealthy relationships, whether it's commentary, whether it's you know alluding to, or whether it's quite literal. Unhealthy relationships with other people, unhealthy relationships with yourself there is this question of who is the villain and i think that's going to be a question that may not have an answer but all those things get consistently perpetrated throughout this game and without a clear-cut answer but i don't think that's because of negligence i think that's because of how well this is crafted i do want to comment on the story and the characters in terms of how things are crafted because i feel like the way this story and these characters are paced is truly remarkable. Quite literally, the dialogue is very fun. Uh, it gives me a lot of vibes of Saturday morning RPG. Again, like things that are recurring, whether it's side stories or just like one thing this one character said earlier and now they're saying the opposite or something like that. Your memory can pick up on it. And if not yours, then your character's memory. Um, so callbacks to things like that. But how things are unveiled, the pace that they're unveiled, the breadcrumbs that you're left to slowly paint a picture of what might be happening, but still not be sure. And at the same time, be absolutely floored with what you're being shown and how complex this story winds up being. I felt such an emotional attachment to these characters in multiple times throughout this story, whether it's someone being on the positive side or the negative side of a situation, and the illusions that are given to you, even by the audio, and we'll talk about the music in a second, but when certain things are said or when characters say like, oh, maybe it's this, but then they're like, they trail off or say, I'll talk about that later. It's like, whoa, does that mean that that person is this or this? And everything kind of coming together, just the way the dialogue is written, your mind races, but as you get further into the chapters, like you're narrowing down the possibilities of what is actually going on here. The game knows that you're doing that. It knows that your emotions are getting tied up in certain situations. That it might even know where your brain is going or what you might think is the case. And then at times it pulls the rug out. It is such a roller coaster and I 
I got to say, this is a masterclass in how to pace a player's emotions through storytelling. I really hope that at the end, the payoff is great, but I don't think it's possible for the payoff of something that, you know, that builds up to be better than the actual buildup. And that's okay because the ride has just been absolutely enjoyable for me, especially someone who loves the idea of gray whether it's with characters, whether it's with morality, and all that is, is really on display here, and it, it's really pulled at my heartstrings throughout playing this game. And of course, speaking of pulling at heartstrings, the music in this game, unbelievable. In a lot of ways, just simple piano composition, but sometimes I do hear some strings. Really reminds me of nostalgia from like Saturday morning RPG, but just like turned up to the max. Not just nostalgia for a past time, but like also this situation right now, like, we can tell what you're feeling and the way that these notes come together and chords and and a lot of these tracks do have variation i actually went back to uh, in chapter four you go back to a certain area and the track that normally plays there has a echoey variation or just in a bit of a different tone and it really made me think of this place but like okay it is different and the music is also different no voice acting in this game i don't even think it's needed the writing and the dialogue in these characters and the themes is so strong I don't think any inflection would have done it any better. Visually, the game is super pixelated. I keep drawing this comparison, but very Saturday morning RPG. Detailed sprites, the reactions and their emotions. Um, reminds me a lot of like Japanese anime like or, or Pokemon, like you know, when something shocking is said, like your character will be like, whoa, and like jump back and you'll see his eyes kind of bug out. Um, so really funny and, and exaggerated in visual stunts. A lot of light colors. It's almost like the game was painted and then just had like a pastel wash go over it. I really enjoy that choice to have just sort of a lighter color palette. And so you really notice when things are darker, when there's that contrast, when you go to a darker place and it's like, okay, this is something's really not right here. A lot of themes with flowers and plants, things blooming. There are some cutscenes that are like these stills where the camera moves. It'll have your pixelated characters in a bit more detail, still translating a a lot of that emotion visually. Let's wrap up the conversation about A Space for the Unbound. I really don't know what more I can say about this game. It does have some very simple gameplay. It's 2D side-scrolling adventure. Very accessible, not dull at all. It is not a simple game by any means. It is an absolute roller coaster of emotion, story, character pacing. It's really unique. Like I said, I talked about all those different IP and, and themes that... I feel like the game might pull inspiration from, but it's such a unique combination of of so many obscure tropes, I feel, and it works so well for how the story alludes to its audience what might be going on or the breadcrumbs that it's leaving. Again, an absolute masterclass in pacing of storytelling and really getting you as the player your emotions to go up and down. A lot of jaw drops, like I said. I can't wait to finish this game and really figure out what's going on and then maybe look back at some of the beginning chapters because I do feel a lot of things that were said or things that were placed were very intentional. In terms of value, $20. You should pay $20 for this game. It is worth it. It is an impressive tale that's being told. So complex, so deep. If you do see this game on sale, I don't know what the hell you're doing but you should be playing this game. I know I compared it a lot. If you liked Saturday Morning RPG, I know that was more nostalgia for 80s and 90s and stuff like that, but this takes a lot of those tones, 
uh, those things that touch on you that make you chuckle or make you say whoa in a moment audibly out loud I think it puts it in a more serious light certainly more serious than Saturday morning RPG but such a roller coaster this game gotta thank Shuhei Yoshida for being a champion of this and really advertising this this is absolutely a game that you should play I highly recommend this game alright that's gonna wrap it up for this episode stay tuned for our next episode to see what new game we found for you <laughs>